Hi, this is the auction preview for our 19th and 20th of June antique sale, a two-day sale of art and antiques, and I think this has got to be one of the most exciting lots of stuff that we've had for a long time. Some really interesting things have turned up to sell this month. So we'll have a quick look around the room, which is currently being set up at the moment. They're hanging pictures as we speak, and we'll have a look here straight away at, I think, one of the most exciting lots that we've had for a long time, which is this George Medal group relating to George Henderson. And this is the group of medals. And this has come directly from his family to sell. So this is the George Medal. And George Henderson was awarded it twice. And that's the rare part of these medals. So the George Medal has been awarded just over 2,000 times uh, since its inception in the 1940s but only 27 times has it been awarded twice. And when you get it the second time, this is what you get. So this is the bar to attach to the George Medal. Um, it's never been taken from its pack. It's got a date on the back, 1963, which was the year that he was awarded it the second time. And unfortunately he died. Um, he threw himself in front of a hand grenade that was lobbed at uh, Kennedy Travaskis in Aden at the airport there saving the life of of Travaskis and this is him here this is George Henderson the action man on horseback this is a picture of his daughter with the medals um, there's photographs of him here bundles of photographs of him a whole folder of letters from Downing Street the colonial office um, Masses of letters. A letter from Travaskis here saying uh, about his personal gratitude and profound admiration for what you did it for me at the airport on Tuesday. I know without the least doubt that it was your prompt action, quite regardless of your own personal safety, which saved my life. From Sir Kennedy Travaskis. And there's masses of letters here from the Queen um, in 1953. Just a, so this all goes with the, the group here um, and the box for the George Medal. And that's a really exciting lot. So that's all being offered as one collection there. So that's in this Wednesday sale. That's lot 100. Great long description of that in the catalogue if you have a look. We'll carry on around the room here. Uh, we have some really good studio pottery this time. So we've got, I think, about 15 lots by Walter Keeler. So this is Walter Keeler's work here. This is a, a magnificent piece and it's a real sculptural item here and this would have been a centrepiece of an exhibition. It's a fantastic thing this. It's immaculate condition. This is Walter Keeler's signature. This uh, spiralling design here. There's another piece here. That's his signature again. There's another piece over here. I'll show you some more in a minute. Very rare to see anything by Walter Keeler coming up for sale at auction. So that'll be quite exciting to watch those. So these are quite early on in the auction. This is lot 44 in the sale. And other studio pottery here. This is by Inga Rockyar. Very nice little studio pot and cover there. This is by Inga Rockyar as well. Another tall pot and cover there. Fantastic collection of studio pottery there. And uh, in the picture section, I'll just show you these while we're over here. But a whole run of these etchings by William Wiley, who's one of the premier names in um, in etching around the first the period of the First World War. So you get these really interesting, very fine dry point etchings of, of First War destroyers. And here's here's one of a First War um, naval convoy with a barrage balloon all from the same house and there's quite a run of those in this sale so they're on the Thursday of the picture sale and we've got little um, oil paintings here by Raymond Campbell who's quite a prominent artist who's still alive oily and joints auctions and these are all by Raymond Campbell and then again in the cabinets here we've got a watercolour by Edward Artizoni He's again a very blue, a blue chip name in modern British art. Next to that is a marine ivory walking stick. 
What else we got? A very nice 19th century pair of these bronze candelabra here. Good looking things as well, nice original condition. They're going to be three to five hundred. Uh, behind you here, got two Leica cameras in this time. Uh, there's one, a 3G here, in absolutely pristine condition. It's got its original box and instructions. And another Leica with a spare uh, telescopic lens and light meter. They're good things. They should be 500 each, at least, I should think. Lots of gold sovereigns this time. Most of these are in groups this time, so we're selling them between three and five sovereigns in a go. And we've got lots of old Japanese Netsuki this time. Beautiful one there of a, a skeleton with a skull. That's interesting. But there's some really good... And they're all genuinely old ivory carvings there. And what else have we got? Let's just have a quick look up here. Lots of studio glass. This is more of the studio pottery. So there's this lovely owl here. Sort of a mid-20th century owl. We don't know who made it, but it'll be 1950s or 60s, I should think. But no signature on that. That's going to estimate 100, 150 pounds. This is more of the Walter Keeler collection. So all these items on the table here, all very similar salt glaze pieces, again with this target-shaped signature impression. Immaculate condition as well. All of this is absolutely immaculate, apart from this teapot, which has had the handle knocked off and glued back on. Now that's quite a, an important collection of studio there. Very nice um, cigar box here, which is satin wood with ivory edges and a silver handle. Smart, isn't it, for the desk? And carry on up here. Brilliant. Art Deco Bakelite radio, a globe radio there. It's designed by Raymond Lowy. And you, you tune it in with this knob on the side. It doesn't work at the moment, it's just a sculptural item. I should, needs some attention to get it going, but that's a brilliant radio. And what else we got? A storm lantern. Light things here. It's an Italian designer um, stool here in leather. This retail price is about nearly three thousand pounds. That would cost you if you going to go and buy it. And there's some retro glass top tables here and wire work stools. So it's not all antiques in the sale. It's a real mixture of antique and modern. And what else we got? Um, Walking sticks. It's a lovely little bulldog's head walking stick here with a with a moving mouth. Uh, the hallmarks on the neck are, I think, 1920, that sort of period. He's got ivory ears. That's smart, isn't it? And there's another one here with a bronze head, which is a little bird. That's quite nice. And then over here, we've got a collection of cigars this time. So it's about 50 lots of cigars. Um, all these are humidors and all the cigars have been kept in these humidors so they're all absolutely perfect humidity and we're selling these in group lots so that'll be the humidor there and all the cigars inside it all in a lot so as I said there's God, you can smell them <laughs> and there's one here Partagas cigars here. Three drawers of them. And the chap that we're selling these for lives locally to us here, an avid collector of fantastic quality cigars, and he gave up smoking a couple of weeks ago and decided to get rid of the whole lot. So there's a really good quality humidor cabinet there as well. So all of them have been kept in absolutely perfect condition. So these will all be sold sort of in group lots, so it's not the whole lot in, in one there. But that's quite, uh, quite a nice collection. So that's again, it's on the Wednesday that we're selling those. Very nice um, oriental stick stand here, which is sort of late 19th century. 
and it's in really good condition as well. And next to it, a lovely white marble bust. The bust will be six to eight hundred, I should think, and the stick stand probably three to four, maybe five hundred pounds or so. And then there's so many interesting things this time. A very nice oil painting here by Fred Cumin. Another blue chip name in modern British art. There we are. So that's. We're just going to change over now, and then Will is going to show you some of the watches and the jewellery in this sale. Thank you very much. All right, so welcome back. Uh, just a few more lots to show you now here. Um, so starting off the afternoon section with the watches, uh, another few uh, other blue chip names to look for um, in this sale. Obviously, you can see at the back there, sticking out like a sore thumb, is Rolex. So this is lot 462, nice unusual blue dial to this one. Um, that's probably, I think we're looking to get around 1,000, 1,500 for that one. But it's boxed, it doesn't have its papers, but it's nice in working order as well. The next one next to it here, 479, is another very good name, IWC. And that's the, the model name of this one is Ingenieur. And that's probably a 70s watch there. I think that one's probably going to be realised around two, two and a half thousand, three thousand. Did a beautiful watch there, lovely movement inside. And the final one here, Jaeger. All very good names here. And again, it's extremely good quality movements inside all of these watches here. And you're looking at about fifteen hundred for that one as well. Lovely few watches there. And going on to the jewellery, we start off the jewellery section with um, something we don't usually start it off with, and it's a, a run of uh, tie pins or stick pins, um, and they're all in lovely cases as you can see here, lovely leather cases. And uh, so this is the first lot in the jewellery section, lot 700, um, which is an Essex crystal tie pin, and it's obviously of a fox's, fox's head there, but it's an extremely Good quality Essex crystal. It's an extremely thick piece of glass there. So it's painted from the inside um, of the crystal and comes out like that. And I think we're probably hoping to get around 150 to 200 for a piece of workmanship like that. It's, and it's in its original box. It's an amazing price, something like that. The next one on, another stick pin here, and that's a moonstone. You might not be able to see it as well as you can in real life, but it gives off a lovely shimmer to it. Again, 100 to 150 for that. And the next two are from a separate owner. So these are both from um, a collection of Edward VIII. So these are Edward VIII's personal stick or tie pins. Uh, so the first one here that I'll show you was given to him before his 16th birthday. Uh, so that's before he was named as the Prince of Wales. Uh, and then the next one here, obviously you can see the, the Prince of Wales three plume on the, on the outside there. And that's, that one there is set with rose cut diamonds and blue enamel. Beautiful tie pins here, and all in their original cases from Collingwood and Co. who are the, the royal family jewellers. And we're hoping to get somewhere around a thousand for them, which uh, obviously each, but um, who knows? Uh, to, to own a, a piece of um, royal jewellery, a thousand doesn't seem so much. Beautiful there. Next one along here, 781. Fantastic pair of earrings there. Lovely settings, <laughs> and quite a few carats of diamonds, I should expect. Nice group of Art Deco jewellery here, an emerald and diamond bracelet at the front. Lovely fan-shaped diamond brooch. And then a few tennis bracelets here as well. Diamond tennis line bracelet and an emerald one. 
probably a couple of hundred each, 300 or so I suppose. And the last one at the front here is a nice Danish silver, uh, it's a Jensen dolphin brooch. See them coming up at auction quite often, they usually make around 100 to 150 but it's quite a nice, nice brooch there, it's nice stylish. And obviously the range of rings as usual, but a fantastic range this time. Some beautiful solitaire diamonds rings in there, in clusters. But the, by far, in a way, the best way to search through all of this jewellery, because uh, I, I can imagine it's difficult to see it on, on, a, on a video camera here, but the best way to do it is to search online. So if you go to our website, burstowenhewitt.co.uk, uh, you can see all of the images uh, as you scroll through the catalogue. They're all nice and blown up as well, so you can appreciate them for what they are. Failing that, do come in in person. They're all set out in the jewellery cabinets on the day and on the viewing days, which are the two days prior to the sale. Um, so our sale dates this time um, are Wednesday for all of the antiques, and that runs all the way along through the day. Uh, starting at 10 and the pictures are on Thursday starting at 11. So please do come along to one of the viewings and um, we'll see you at the sale day. Thank you very much.